Now, if you need to select and remove all of one color from an image, there's a couple of different tools that you can use, but one of the most useful is the magic wand tool. That is because we have some additional settings that allow us to only select pixels that are, say, in the background and not in our subject. To show you what I mean, let's first activate the magic wand tool by clicking and holding on either the quick selection tool or the object selection tool to find the magic wand tool. Now, the way that this tool works is that based on your sample size, which in this case is five by five, and while our image layer is selected, when we click somewhere in our photo, it's going to take our sample size, see what colors are underneath our cursor when we clicked, and then try to find similar colors to the sampled area to add to our selection. And in this case, you can see how it only selected the pixels in the background. Now, when there are other tones of brown, we of course will need to add to our selection. But before we get there, I need to show you what might be going wrong if this doesn't happen to you. And instead, you're having a selection that jumps all over your photo, including throughout your subject. So pressing Command or Control D to deselect that. If I go and disable the contiguous setting, what that means is that when I go and click to set my sample, Photoshop is going to look for any matching pixels within the photo, regardless of whether or not they are touching. When I have the contiguous setting enabled, it will only add similar colored pixels that are touching one another, but when it is disabled, it will jump around the photo and therefore select totally isolated areas around the image. At the most basic level, this essentially means that when contiguous is enabled, it will isolate your adjustment mostly to the background, and when it is disabled, you'll also end up selecting your subject. So pressing Command or Control D to deselect that, I'll enable contiguous, make sure all of these settings are as is, and I'll actually just reduce my tolerance to 15. Now, if you want to learn more about the intricacies of the magic wand tool, I'll leave a link in the description below where I talk about this tool more in depth. But for now, I'll click to set my sample and I need to add some other areas to this selection to include these other tones of brown. So I'll hold the shift key to add to my selection and I can just continue to click around to add to the sample area and therefore my selection. Now there are some missing pieces around my subject's ear, but that's okay, we can touch that up in just a minute. With this selection active, I'll click on my image layer and then add a layer mask and then invert that layer mask by pressing Command or Control I to invert it. Therefore, we see the correct pixels now. Now, there are two major problems that we're left with that we need to touch up. The first is, of course, the missing ear, which we can fix by clicking on our layer mask and using the brush tool with the foreground color set to white. And with a high hardness of brush, I can just go and paint back the areas that are needed to rebuild my subject's ear. But now that leaves us with our second problem, which is the fact that the edges of our subject look absolutely terrible. And this is the downside of the magic wand tool. Because it's looking for little colored pixels that are all little boxes, you end up with this really blocky pattern around your selections. Fortunately, we can fix this with the help of selected mask. And because I have a more complicated subject with hair and things like that, we need to do two different rounds of the selected mask adjustment. So to begin, I'm going to add a global smoothing adjustment that is going to fix all of this jaggedness in one go. To access selected mask, I'll just double click on the layer mask of that layer. And then within the global refinements, we want to increase the smoothing slider to begin, which is going to smooth out all of those jagged edges as you see here. Then I'll increase the feather just a little bit to blur the edge edge and reveal a little bit of our previous image. And then I'll increase the contrast slider to make that edge sharp once again. So now looking at her shoulder, for example, or along the edge of the flowers, things are looking pretty good. If you still have some unwanted coloring, we can go to the shift edge slider and drag this inwards to bring our selection edge in by a certain percentage. Although these harder edges look pretty nice, the problem is of course with her hair, that does not look very good. If you were doing this process with a graphic, your work would pretty much be done at this point. But because I have a subject with more complex edges, I need to do one more round of these adjustments. So with my first global refinements complete, I'll set the output to layer mask and click OK. Now all of those selected mask adjustments are applied onto this layer mask and we can go back into selected mask to update our subject's hair. Once again, double clicking on that layer mask, this time I'll go up to the refine hair button and click on that for Photoshop to do the majority of the work for us. 
Now, the reason that we're doing this as two separate adjustments is that if we try to use the global refinements and the hair adjustments at the same time, we would end up with really weird looking hair. But by separating these two adjustments, we can focus on getting a good result for the hair while still maintaining a crisp edge around the rest of the subject. Now, since there are these missing areas, we can add them back into view by clicking on the brush tool with the add to option enabled, and I'll make sure I'm using a low hardness of brush. Now using the bracket keys to scale down the brush, I can just paint along the edge of the subject to add back visibility to those missing areas. As for any areas that you want to remove, we can choose the subtract from mode with our brush tool and then paint over any areas we want to remove from view. When you're painting near these harder edges, we can change our brush hardness to something like 80 or 90%. Once all those little touch-ups are complete, we can once again output to a layer mask and click OK. Now with the help of the magic wand tool, we not only selected a specific color, isolated to the background, but we also were able to fix some of the drawbacks of the magic wand tool with those jagged edges. The selected mask workspace is so useful for these types of things. And whether you're working with subjects such as this or with graphics, for example, the selected mask workspace is so helpful. If you want to learn more about how to use the selected mask workspace in a bit more of an in-depth workflow, I definitely recommend checking out this video here where I talk about the best ways for beginners to remove backgrounds in Photoshop, including with the help of Select and Mask.